I don't know about you, but every single day my inbox is full of messages, blogs, articles about one thing, yield farming, which is literally the hottest topic in DeFi, which is the hottest topic in crypto right now. But do you understand it? I think I do, sort of, some of it. Well, that's the problem you see, because it is quite challenging. This is The Defiant. Okay, firstly, let me just say that nothing you see in this video should be taken as financial advice. This is an examination of what's happening in DeFi, not a roadmap to future prosperity. So please do your own research. And with that out of the way, let's get our wellies on and go digging in the fertile fields of yield farming. Unless you've been living under a rock, you will no doubt have seen all the excitement surrounding governance tokens like Comp and BAL, yielding interest rates as high as 100%. What is going on? Well, there is only one person to ask, and that is, of course, Camilla. Yield farming, it's had a profound effect on the crypto market in general. But can you, can you explain to me what the appeal of it is and why people are going so crazy for it? Okay, so yield farming, I think, has two main appeals for people. One is definitely owning a piece of the app that you're using, like owning a piece of the protocol. There's this great concept that uh, investor Jesse Weldon likes to talk about, which is a new ownership economy. And this, it's this idea that through these tokens, you, you can have greater ownership and participation in these protocols and applications and participate you know, in, in governance and sites, have a say on how these things are run. But the second reason why this is so attractive is simply people like to make money. <laughs> and I think um, that's what's driving a lot of the activity most of the activity, probably, you know, um, if we're being honest, more than the lofty goals of decentralized governance, people are drawn by the thousand percent yields. <laughs> Basically, that's what's going on. You know, people are putting money into these protocols, depositing funds to get these governance tokens in return. And as you spend more time in this space, you quickly realize that there is a whole lot to talk about, including, of course, the risks. But first, let's do a quick recap on DeFi. What we're talking about here is an ecosystem of decentralized applications enabling anyone with an internet connection to access a variety of financial products and services spanning crypto asset exchanges, margin trading, financial derivatives, synthetic assets, algorithmic trading, and lending markets. Got it? But the biggest change to come about recently is from protocols like Balancer and Compound distributing their own native tokens to incentivize liquidity, increasing activity and returns for traders as these tokens gain in value. So this is what we're really talking about with farming, planting seeds and reaping crops in the form of these additional tokens. And appropriately enough, I have some Lego in front of me to demonstrate. So here's how it works. You start with a token, let's say die, which you place in compound. Now there's an interest rate for leaving the die there, which you will earn more die with. Very nice. But on top of that, you earn comp, the governance token which is also yours and which also has value. And those are yours to withdraw whenever you like and do with what you feel like. Happy farming. The thing is, given the amount of competition between investors as well as high gas prices, yield farming is only really profitable if you're willing to put a significant sum of money to work. I mean, we're talking big bucks here. If you're only farming with, you know, say $100 to $1,000 in crypto, that'll probably result in a net loss. And if you're tinkering with small amounts to understand how it all works, that's okay, but that strategy won't be profitable. But let's go deep and take a closer look at liquidity pools. Centralized exchanges like Binance and Coinbase enable trading through an order book. All orders set by traders are put into the order book and matched based on a trader's desired price and the size of the trade. But in DeFi, liquidity is provided by automated market makers or AMMs. Where a traditional exchange needs a market maker to ensure its order book is liquid, AMMs pull liquidity from various users and execute it based on a given equation. So it's all maths. And this equation varies for each AMM. 
Now, anyone can be a liquidity provider on these DEXs. There's no capital restriction. You can put in as much or as little as you want. And adding liquidity to an AMM like Uniswap or Balancer is actually quite simple. And you can use one of the many dashboards or mobile wallets around like Instadap, Zerium, or Argent. It's important for people to add liquidity to DeFi's AMMs, as this gives these DEXs or decentralized exchanges the capability to serve a larger number of customers. Moreover, increased liquidity can attract crypto speculators who trade larger volumes. Now, right now, the liquidity of DEXs is, is inadequate for large traders, meaning that working as a liquidity provider is a critical service for these exchanges. So how do you make money? The trick is to spot where an outsized return appears and exploit it early. Yes, the interest is great, but the rates aren't particularly exciting. It's those secondary tokens that are the multiplier. For instance, 2,880 comp are issued every day, so users receive what is essentially free money every 24 hours. And with comp trading above $150, well, that's not bad, is it? And Compound wasn't the first to do this either. Synthetics introduced an SETH to ETH pool that offers liquidity providers the added incentive of SNX rewards, and Synthetix currently has two substantial liquidity incentives, an SBTC pool and an SUSD pool on curve, again, paying out rewards in SNX. And I realize as I'm saying this that it probably sounds like complete gobbledygook, but if you don't understand what any of that means or what wrapped tokens are, don't worry, we will cover it in a future video. Another interesting one is Ampleforth, which recently announced their geyser, or geyser, or geyser, their so-called smart faucet that will distribute Ample tokens to liquidity providers. And so far, users have locked $12.5 million in the geyser, geyser, geyser. And just check out the interest rate. And yes, there's a disclaimer here, which is that the APY doesn't take into account any loss in value in the underlying asset. So if the market goes down, that's on you. But come on. So this is really the main appeal of yield farming. It works essentially like a high yield savings account. And when the interest rate drops, you can go on a site like DeFi rate, look for a better opportunity and just keep going. Your money can do so much for you in DeFi. And I think that's why it's so exciting. But I know what you're thinking. If something looks too good to be true, well, you know. So you can't really talk about DeFi without talking about the risks, like hacks. Balancer drained of half a million dollars facilitated by a DIDX flash loan using an exploit they'd already been warned about, or the DeForce ecosystem protocol Lendef.me relieved of a mere $25 million. Or even that fateful day, March the 12th, when the price of ETH fell sharply, causing MakerDAO to be under collateralized by around $2 million. There were lots of liquidations, and now there's a lawsuit and it's likely we'll see many, many more. But beyond that, there's so much irrational price discovery going on. I mean, just look at Comp, or the sudden 27% interest on BAT tokens, for instance. But it will, of course, settle down as the space matures, but yeah, it's risky. I'm reminded of the quote from Wall Street where Michael Douglas stands up in front of a room full of people and he says, greed, ladies and gentlemen, for want of a better word, greed is good. Greed is right. Greed works. And I wonder if for crypto, greed, in a sense, drives innovation. What do you think? Oh, definitely. I think we've seen evidence of this throughout uh, crypto's history. Uh, I think like the best example is the ICO boom in uh, 2017. You know, it drew in billions of dollars um, and thousands of people to like human capital into the space. Um, a lot of those people then left, uh, a, lot, a lot of them lost money, but in the end, you know, it, it brought in investment in, in many of the protocols that are leading the space today, you know, like Synthetix, Zero X, Kyber Network, all of these names raised money back then. And so what's happening now will be similar. You know, we're seeing kind of this new inflow of money and attention and some things will break. Uh, there will be scammers some people will lose money. I think the outcome will be more innovation and, you know, we'll learn from the mistakes that surely are, are being made right now. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that this was just a bunch of eggheads sitting around in a room experimenting with money and experimenting with economics and this won't really have any lasting impact. But let me leave you with a startling statistic. 
The DeFi market cap has tripled in three months. It's now sitting just shy of seven and a half billion dollars. That's a lot. The teams behind these new protocols are active in Telegram and Discord. You can engage with them and help steer the direction of this brave new world. That's exciting. But it's also scary because smart contracts are relatively new tech. There are hacks seemingly weekly now. So just be sure you know what you're getting into. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. We will be putting these out weekly. I've been Robin Schmidt, Creative Director of Harmony, alongside Camilla Russo, and this was The Defiant. What is going on? And what does it all mean? Hello. Wonderful farming. That didn't work. Whoa, whoa, whoa.